Automobiles are many things to many people. Engineering, status symbol, performance, pop culture, art, environmental, even transportation. This is the BMW XM. It's all of the above wrapped in a blanket of controversy. Not since the M1 of the early 1980s has there been an M model all to its own. This is not a high performance X5 or X7. It's an XM, much to the chagrin of attorneys at a certain satellite radio provider. It's also the first M car to run on dinosaur juice and this, making the XM a plug-in hybrid. It's not inexpensive. The base price? $160,000. Not cheap, and this one's fully loaded. Now, normally I'd be talking about the BMW price spiral, but as tested, this one is $167,400. As long as you're spending that kind of money, you might as well get all the options, all of which I recommend. Bowers & Wilkins Sound at $3,400 is a deal. The secure orange interior at $1,500 saves money on coffee. It's more stimulating than caffeine. At $2,500, the M driver's package raises the top speed and provides instruction at a BMW Performance Center to try it safely. That's it. There are seven paint colors. None have an upcharge. Oh yeah, I heard you gasp. The color of this trim and the calipers can be changed at no charge. I think a wellness check is in order at BMW's product planning department. Normally these things cost hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. Not everyone is going to love the design. I didn't at all. At first, after a few days, I actually began to understand what the stylists at BMW were thinking. Modern art can polarize, and the XM does, but darned if everyone that I talked to oh. All right. really liked it. Uh, not the price tag, but the strong presence. I say thumbs up. I like it. XM doesn't photograph particularly well. It looks best in the wild. I can't think of another BMW with rondelles etched into the glass. Twice. The giant twin kidney grille is actually kind of tame here. But I can't help thinking the crew in Spartanburg, South Carolina mounted the lower window trim a few inches too low. The gaps between it break the line and catch my eye, but that's white paint. Body colors that are a closer match offer a more integrated look. It can be had in gold and red if you upgrade to the more powerful, more expensive label red model. I'll just uh, leave this right here for you to ponder. Does the XM need the extra 90 horsepower label red supplies? Well, the setup on this one is no slouch. On the gas side, there's 483 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque generated by a 4.4-liter twin-turbocharged V8 with a cross-bank exhaust manifold. It's trimmed so stylishly, an open hood could be mistaken for an art gallery. Mounted ahead of the transmission using a pre-gearing stage is a 194-horse electric motor with 332 pound-feet of torque, a 29.5 kilowatt-hour lithium-ion pack with 19.2 kilowatt-hours usable is mounted under the floor. That's a lot of reserve. In total, the gas-electric dynamic duo delivers 644 horsepower and 590 pound-feet of torque and the startup is a visual crowd pleaser. Love the stacked exhausts. A throatier tone is at your fingertips. Charging is pretty quick. A spent pack can juice up in just over three hours. All electric range is EPA rated at 31 miles. The gearbox is an 8-speed with an electronic selector that requires deliberate action. Not only is there manual shifting, the paddles deserve their own exhibit at the Pompidou, looking like they cost at least a thousand bucks each. All four wheels get power, all four wheels do the steering. Springs are steel, no air suspension, but the dampers are adaptive. This being a plug-in hybrid, there are drive modes that range from automatic to all-electric to full-on performance. And for quickly switching to preferred customized driving setups, there are these. Uh, maybe store one for comfort and another for fun.
Charged up, it's pretty easy to motor about on electricity alone with a modest right foot. I'm seeing about 25 miles of all electric range. So the temperatures are in the mid 60s. In pure EV mode, there's respectable performance for motoring about town. Uh, now, if you want maximum velocity, go with gas and electric, zero to 60 happening in about four seconds flat. And it sounds terrific. It moves the XM briskly, even weighing in at three tons. Electric motors launch with instant torque, seamlessly followed by a twin turbo V8 chaser. If all you want is speed, an X5M competition is quicker and less expensive, but this, this is unique. Even in pure EV mode, if you drop the throttle hard, you will kick the V8 on. It's pretty easy to hear. And in sport mode, you get both the growl and the electronic performance sound two for one. Composer Hans Zimmer created those EV tones. If you're a name dropper, Certainly doesn't sound like a Chevrolet Volt. And if that kind of velocity doesn't convince you that an SUV can be a performance machine, uh, the top speed is electronically governed at 155 miles an hour, 168 with the M drivers package here. If you're on electrons only, top speed is 87 miles an hour. Being an M car, there are driving dynamics to live up to. Weight distribution is essentially 50-50. To banish body roll and reduce head toss, XM has active roll stabilization with an anti-roll bar decoupling feature. It's powered by supercapacitors for faster response. Are you beginning to understand the price tag? An electronically controlled M Sport rear differential throws torque between the back left and right wheels. The XM definitely has a raised ride height. That's what people want these days. Gotta say though, for a tall boy, this carves up corners impressively. It really does. Personally, I would rather have my performance lower to the ground, a Porsche 911 Turbo, maybe a BMW M5, that would be good. Those won't haul and do chores like XM though. The complex dance between the V8 and electric motor is as unified as it gets. In auto mode, the eight speeds shifts are nearly undetectable or shift into sport mode for some visceral snap. Not gonna lie, this does egg you on to drive faster and it does weigh over 6,000 pounds. So good brakes are important. And these are very good brakes. Uh, excellent stopping power, great modulation. And of course, there's the sound. The growl never gets old. Disappearing into the background when cruising, XM is moderately quiet at speed, not overly so. Hey, it's an M. I could have picked a smoother road to drive and gotta tell you that even in its most docile setting, the adaptive suspension is on the firm side. You gotta remember, big wheels, low profile tires. If you want something comfortable, maybe a Lexus RX. Owners might not care about the price of gas, but the electric side is easier on mother nature. Fuel economy is kind of what you make it. If your commute is 25 miles or less every day, then you're gonna be using little to no gasoline. The EPA average is rated at 46 MPGE. That's if you plug it in. If you don't, it's 14 miles per gallon. It only takes a second to plug it in. If you haven't noticed, the interior is a nice place to work the wheel. The craftsmanship jumps out at you. No cheap, glossy plastic, no budget mouse fur. Hardware feels like hardware, and all of the storage areas are lined with finished edges, nothing rough to the touch. The headliner, with its dramatic lighting, looks like an audio diffuser stolen from Daft Punk's recording studio. Uh, no sunroof, if that's a must-have. Very few cup holders are heated and cooled. There should be no complaints with the chairs, considering they're infinitely adjustable. Soft closed doors? Check. Love the M detail in the seat belts and the heated wheel. 
Here's something cool. Let's say you have friends that live at the end of a very narrow winding driveway in a beautiful house on a cliff overlooking the sea. And you drive all the way down only to find out it's fallen into the ocean. And there's no way to turn around at all. Never fear, you have backup assistant. Just push the button and the car does everything for you. The XM precisely retraces its route without any input from the driver. It just does it all automatically. And that's a good thing because, you know, you're probably stressed. And don't worry about your friends, they're insured. Hopefully they weren't in the house though. BMW's iDrive 8 interface can be controlled in every way imaginable. Uh, there's touch, and though the screen is responsive, it is a bit of a reach. So these controls might appeal to some, plus it eliminates fingerprints on the display if you load that. After an hour, it's all very intuitive. There are gesture controls. They don't always work. Audio up, audio down. And then of course, natural voice prompts. Those do work really well. You use the wake phrase, hey BMW, is there a good cup of coffee around? I have found these destinations for the category cup of coffee. Which one should I select? There are a few hard buttons to quickly get to defrosting and audio levels, plus all of the controls down here. Keep in mind, to use those natural voice commands, owners need to subscribe to a data plan. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are wireless, and those, uh, those you don't have to pay for. Apparently, I am not in a back seat. BMW calls this the M Lounge. Sounds like a German disco. Yeah, it's kind of swanky. I mean, look at this. It is like a couch. Notice how the seat wraps into the door. The seat backs are fixed into place, but at the right angle. For a back seat, very loungy, very luxurious. I mean, headroom, extremely generous. Same with knee, leg, and foot room. I also like these door pockets. They're huge. I can put an iPad back here. Speaking of, you can buy an iPad holder, plug it into there, power it off here. More storage, nice. Gotta love the look of the roof back here. Definitely a club vibe. Chill, there's dual zone climate control back here and heated seats. Kind of surprised they're not vented to at this price. More storage, more charging options. The uh, center spine, not too big. If you're looking to pamper your friends, this is the way to do it. Three average sized adults will be supremely comfortable back here. The irony being most Americans drive alone, this space will largely go unused. The XM deserves to be seen at night. You might have noticed the illuminated twin kidneys during the driving sequence. Um, should BMW be paying owners for advertising the brand? Uh, more and more, lighting is setting luxury vehicles apart from the mainstream rides. There are some lovely and dramatic touches here. It feels special after a night out. It can be customized, so if you're a Red Sox fan or a Dodgers fan, BMW has you covered. This all extends to the M Lounge, too. For a combination of exclusivity, velocity, and practicality, the XM is hard to beat. The cargo hold is well finished. An included charge cord comes with storage that has more cachet than a Louis Vuitton bag. There's no spare tire and the floor is fixed in place. But give credit to BMW for taking the time to engineer a 40-20-40 split since, you know, these won't be pressed into 2x4 hauling duty, right? Eh, maybe skis. In max cargo mode, there's 64 cubic feet. I always do the TP trunk test with the back seat up, mainly because it's more work than you can imagine bringing out 20 bundles of bath tissue. You're looking at around 19 cubic feet. That's eight packs of softness and absorbency, or carry-on suitcases if that's your thing. And while it looks like the load is sticking out and the lift gate won't close, uh, come on, that's a requirement of the test. All right, let's sum this up. It's time for red light, green light. Green light. The lofty performance is so capable, you'll need a track to explore the limits. It's a plug-in hybrid, so in concept, it can be environmentally friendly. The cabin is a showstopper, especially in secure orange. The bold exterior design won't be confused for anything else on the road. 
Yellow lights? It's efficient when charged up, with a drinking problem if not. iDrive 8 is mighty appealing, paying for a data service isn't. XM is stuffed with tech, but complexity can bite a car in the bumper. Red lights. A revisiting styling, the bold exterior design won't be confused for anything else on the road. It polarizes. That and the as-tested price of 167 grand will limit its appeal. The ride quality can be adjusted, but it starts at firm. It's not a plush mobile. The XM is almost more rolling think tank than production vehicle, as if BMW filled it full of different concepts and technologies that it's been working on to see how people respond. The XM certainly isn't for everybody. I mean, for starters, there's the price. Starting at $160,000? Ouch. And then there's the design. Not everybody's gonna like it. BMW seems to get away with being bolder than most manufacturers. But if you need your performance to have some semblance of practicality, this could be your ride. The XM might be an answer to a question no one asked. Pragmatic wealthy folk might be perfectly happy with the performance and luxury found in an X5 or X7 M60i for significantly less financial outlay. But for making a statement, the XM marks the spot. Wondering what to cross shop? I would say a Porsche Cayenne Turbo SE Hybrid, Bentley Bentega, and Lamborghini Urus. Special thanks to Mike Meredith this week for driving duties so I could shoot running footage. And for those who have used an Apple Macintosh for years, does XM's greeting tone sound familiar? Before I go, I just wanted to thank you folks for being the best viewers on the internet. Seriously. When I go to car events and talk to other automotive writers, they ask me if I edit out the toxicity and sludge from the comments, and I don't. I don't really have to. You guys are really good. Keep it classy, okay? Remember to subscribe to this channel and click notifications if you want to be a classy viewer. Uh, follow me on social media. If you're getting anything out of these reviews, feel free to tip me using YouTube Super Thanks or Venmo. My name, Tom Volk, is kind of unusually spelled, so it's pretty easy. Um, and if you have a question, leave it in the comments. I'll try to get to it, but sometimes there are just too many to get to. Only so much time in the day. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.